we explain the Roman Republic. After the fall of the Etruscan kings, the Romans found themselves divided into two major social classes, those from the upper class who owned land and made the rules known as the patrician class, and those from the working class who owned small portions of land, they were farmers, they were merchants, craftspeople who became known as the plebeians. Both groups had the vote technically, but the patricians could serve in government and the plebeians couldn't. The protection of the plebeian class came from the patrician authority and was laid out in the Twelve Tables, a sort of Roman constitution for keeping the social contract. The Roman government revolved around natural law and civil law. Natural laws were seen as the unbreakable rules of universal principles that guided every human, such as their right to trial, speech, and defense. Later in the empire, this became known as the law of nations. Civil law was more easily bent to protect only Roman citizens. The Roman government was structured around a system of checks and balances supported by essentially three branches of government running out of the legislative branch. This semi-executive branch was composed of two consuls who acted as co-executives. One stayed in Rome and ran the government, the other left the city and ran the wars and foreign affairs. The praetor was responsible for upholding the law, like an attorney general. In later years, there would be a praetor for non-citizens as well as citizens. The legislative capability was composed of the Senate and the Assemblies. The Senate was composed originally of 300 men from the wealthiest families of the patrician class. It had meant to be an advisory body, but gained the right to pass laws in the 200s. The legislative assemblies offered the people the power of legislation. The Centurion Assembly, for instance, chose consul and praetor, and they allowed all citizens a vote, although those votes tended to be lumped into social classes, so that all of the poor got one vote in the headcount assembly while the wealthy took voting power in districts. The plebeians were upset that they served government but had so little power. So in 471, Rome established a council of the plebeians in which the plebeians could elect tribunes to steer the direction of Rome. Eventually, the plebeians could even serve an office. However, tribunes were easily bribed and swayed by the patrician class, and since a vote required unanimous consent for the tribunes, the wealthy tended to still control the republic despite the Twelve Tables. <laughs>